I'm really pleased to start this workshop with introducing to, to those who don't know Nikolai. So Nikolai is the main uh, developer, uh, <coughs> leader of software development in, in AnyLogic. So Nikolai Cherkov will be um, giving this workshop mainly. I will be helping him. Uh, so the agenda is very simple. We have two items on our agenda. First is just some um, ongoing development in AnyLogic Material Handling Library. We'll show you a couple of features that uh, we have developed and released in uh, 8.4. 8.4 was released uh, probably a month ago, right? And uh, it's going to be a smallest, uh, smaller part. And the second part is uh, a case, a use case for uh, AnyLogic Private Cloud. So we will show you the full uh, development and deployment cycle of a uh, customized branded UI for a model that uh, someone wants to deliver to the end users uh, with the help of the AnyLogic Cloud. All right, so uh, part one, and this is uh, Material Handle Library new features. Uh, just very briefly, so <clears throat> the new things are we have new object, new, new block, crane, uh, we have lifts, and therefore you, uh, <clears throat> you can easily put together models with multiple levels. Uh, and uh, we also have a notion of network port, which um, helps you to put together regularly structured uh, networks without replicating things, without like copying and pasting them. And uh, we'll be showing to you that in, in a second. Then uh, some uh, more customization is now allowed with the uh, routing of um, li um, lane guided vehicles. This is kind of more advanced feature. And then the last, uh, and the most anticipated feature is uh, transporters moving in free space. So the plan is that we will uh, show you a couple of models, and then with this model, uh, transporters moving in free space, we will perform the, the complete cycle of uh, uploading it to the cloud, uh, developing the custom UI, and delivering the custom UI with the help of the private cloud to the end user. All right, so uh, with that said, I will uh, ask Nikolai to, to switch to any logic. Let's, yeah, okay. So now, now I'm switching to any logic. You, you, you can sit down, it's, I think okay. it's more comfortable. I'll start with uh, demonstrating uh, the model with uh, uh, Crane. It's our new functionality. So I'm starting it. So in this model, uh, this is a simple example model where the Crane takes uh, uh, some items from conveyor, places them in some location, uh, and uh, uh, this is uh, the model logic. We can see here that there is a space markup, crane, and a special flow chart block moved by crane, uh, which operates with uh, this uh, space markup. So we can see this uh, crane uh, operates with two uh, different movements. Uh, so it's like a shared resource in this model. So another <coughs> functionality of uh, our new release is a uh, uh, lifts. So in this uh, uh, model, we can see a uh, three-level uh, facility where, where we have uh, some operations, uh, uh, workstations, uh, storage, and uh, we have uh, lifts uh, between these levels. We have uh, AGVs uh, moving by lanes uh, from one station to another, depending on the process, uh, and uh, 
Well, they trail between these uh, levels by new space markup lift. You can see like it's going down. Um, and uh, this is a, the logic you can see here. Move by transporter block is the only block in this model. So all the routing uh, is made automatically uh, between these uh, networks inter interconnected using lift blocks. If we go into uh, the model in the analogic development environment, uh, we can see this lift block. This one is the main lift, and the uh, other blocks, uh, they refer to this uh, main lift block. They have a floor elevation parameter here, and uh, Networks are connected to these lifts, so any logic knows how to route items through the whole network. One more model uh, where we can see, I will show you a simple buffer uh, implemented using a replicated agents with lift. Uh, so we have a conveyor and uh, some uh, sorter in which uh, moves items to different levels using these lift blocks. If we open this model in uh, any logic, uh, we can see here uh, the main line, two lifts on the base level, and a population of this uh, buffer line agent type, uh, which is simply uh, one conveyor with two lifts. So this model is uh, um, created dynamically during the model start, so we can control number of these uh, uh, buffer lines in this uh, population, so we, they are all automatically created and connected to each other, and uh, all the routing is done uh, using these uh, simple blocks. And uh, by the way, this, uh, in this model, lifts uh, connect conveyors not AGV networks. Yeah, so, so the number of levels is simply a parameter and you don't have to, to copy and paste things. And uh, oh, finally, I will show you the model which we will be uh, using the second uh, part, the second of part of the part workshop. Uh, this is a factory floor model of uh, some production process uh, having Three phases. Um, started. Make full screen. Uh, we have a phase one where some station uh, and the conveyor. We have a phase uh, two where we have two equal uh, conveyors with some processing stations uh, and uh, some buffer uh, implemented using a pallet rack where. We store items while these conveyors are busy. Uh, and we have the third phase, uh, this U-shaped conveyor with some stations and uh, some required uh, elements, items, uh, which are stored on this uh, REC system. They are delivered to this uh, production line. Um, so all the delivering between these phases and production lines is uh, done by uh, AGVs, um, we have two types of AGVs, uh, sorry, uh, this one and uh, this flat one. Uh, and all these AGVs, they move in a free space. So they do not have actually any uh, network um, markup uh, defining exact strict paths. Uh, the only thing we define here is uh, walls, uh, so it's like a environment they will uh, feel and uh, sense, uh, and uh, they also observe these conveyors, pilot racks, uh, and other AGVs as well, so they do not collide to each other. So they try to avoid all these obstacles and move in free space. We can, uh, if we switch to any logic, we can see here uh, on the logic view, This HVS block is configured to use free space navigation. 
Absolutely. Yeah, and, and if you can show the markup for them or the layout markup. So if you, uh, if you can see, guys, there's not a single guiding line uh, drawn in this, um, in this model. So what we have here, we have uh, conveyors we have, and stations. Uh, we have uh, like pallet storages, pallet tracks. And we have walls, right, of different shape and different different type, like pillars, etc. So, uh, and uh, basically, AGVs are told this is this is your free space. These are your obstacles, and then they find uh, their routes uh, and they uh, avoid obstacles, avoid collisions, and. Uh, uh, the, uh, this is the the, uh, the new feature that uh, what was recently released. The um, well, the uh, kind of the story behind it is uh, we already had the technology in place, as you uh, as you may know, because we had pedestrian library, right? Where we have a kind of very similar algorithm for pedestrian flow movements. So for us, it was just okay. Uh, how do we um, let's say uh, replicate the, the same technology for AGVs? Uh, which we did in this um, in, in this uh, recent release of, of any logic. Okay, so um, so this uh, model also has uh, uh, mm -hmm. some statistics, uh, global statistics, and uh, uh, individual statistics. You can select any AGV to view its uh, 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 diamond states, etc. Um, and this is uh, the model logic, uh, so phases of the mm -hmm. process and. Uh, so, on. so now, uh, uh, okay, I'm, yeah. Uh, uh, thanks, thanks, Nikolai. So, um, let's say I'm a consultant, either internal uh, consultant in my organization, or maybe I do work for um, for the external clients, and I develop this model. So, let's say I liked it, right, and I want to deliver it to my uh, end users. Now, the <clears throat> and here we pass to the second phase of our workshop, which uh, we named a use case for any logic private cloud. Okay, so uh, here's my problem. First, I have a model that I is going to be uh, used operationally, which means that it was not developed to get some numbers, put those numbers in the report, and throw the model away. No, the model is going to be uh, continuously in use, right? Which is obviously a good case. Now, uh, the users are, are the people that know nothing about simulation. They don't have any logic installed in their machines, right? And they work from different locations. So they will be from time to time accessing the model and may, might be simultaneously, maybe not, and uh, I have, can make no assumptions about it. Then the next thing, uh, my company or my client uh, is very sensitive about the model itself and the data that um, relates to the model. And the requirement is that the data should never leave a local network. And then finally, uh, the um, scenario of using the model uh, that I have in mind for the end users is pretty sophisticated. It does not really map well to uh, like default any logic animation because it has some, uh, let's say, wizard-like phases. Uh, it has some charts. It has some controls that cannot be found in uh, in the default any logic animation UI. And uh, the last requirement here is that the UI should work equally good from any um, any kind of screen, be it like laptop, tablet, uh, or a phone, right? So what do I do? Uh, my thoughts uh, are very kind of sad thoughts. Uh, for first, obviously, the model cannot be left on my laptop. It should go somewhere, right? And we all know that any logic allows exporting any model as Java application, which is obviously a great feature. But, okay, I have this Java application, what do I do with it? Do I ask the, my client's system administrator to uh, kind of put it in the server and ensure it has the right like, kind of, mm, uh, Java environments? And, okay, uh, probably that'll work, but what if I upgrade the model? How do you do that? So that's uh, probably not the ideal solution. 
Uh, also, I can export the model to any logic cloud. But uh, the uh, any logic cloud, although it's a secure environment, but it runs on uh, currently it runs on Amazon servers, and I will never be able to convince my management that that is secure enough. So that is, let's say, uh, not an option for me. Then, how about the user interface? Um, being an experienced any logic modeler, some time ago I learned. Java Swing. I, I hate Java Swing because it's not the uh, kind of, let's say, up-to-date uh, framework uh, to, uh, to develop user interface, but nevertheless, now I know it. But uh, obviously, Java Swing or whatever I develop using, uh, using Java Swing doesn't, does not uh, work on phones and tablets, etc. And also, uh, AnyLogic has discontinued Java Swing, right? Because since uh, AnyLogic 8.3, Java Swing has been replaced with uh, HTML and SVG, newer technology. So the solution that uh, we suggest to consider is uh, usage of the private cloud to uh, as the execution environment for models that are used operationally, right? The models for models that are not thrown away after the kind of first run and first numbers appear, but models that, that, that will have their users for a certain amount of time. So um, while the model is not really heavy in terms of memory and uh, CPU time, the light version of the cloud, which is also the cheapest version, um, would work for me. Uh, next thing, obviously, uh, the private cloud or private cloud light installs on a local network, so there will be no security issues. It's behind the firewall, and everything is under control. So the uh, managers are, are happy. And uh, obviously, uh, as uh, well, everybody who have used the uh, any logic cloud knows that it supports um, upgrades and supports user management. So I get this kind of by default. Uh, how about the UI? First, I don't want to develop uh, UI myself because I consider myself as uh, a simulation modeler, and I better you know spend my time on the model logic rather than uh, like sophisticated user interfaces. Uh, what I'll do, I'll uh, tell my web, uh, web designer just to uh, put together an HTML, some HTML, JavaScript, and CSS code uh, that will implement this scenario, the user scenario that I have in mind. And uh, I will use AnyLogic Cloud API to invoke the model from the user interface. Uh, these are the uh, APIs that are that are there. JavaScript, Java, and Python. Python is coming very soon. And obviously, for my case, I will use JavaScript. And um, that's, uh, that's the plan. So uh, let's, uh, let's go. Now I will, again, ask Nikolai to uh, explain what we're going to do next. Uh, so next, uh, we have some installation here. Uh, actually, we are demonstrating uh, AnyLogic to AnyLogic Cloud connection and uh, AnyLogic Cloud being run on this machine. So we have two laptops here and a router. It's this a real one, router. Real router, so this uh, green uh, wires connecting these uh, laptops. Uh, so uh, this one is uh, our uh, like developer machine, and this one is a cloud. Oh, th this uh, one is the user machine. Uh, user, user machine. Uh, 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 yeah, it may be user machine, maybe developer machine who develops uh, any model in any logic and uploads it to any logic cloud. And uh, uh, when uh, the model, when we run the model here, uh, actually the model animation uh, and uh, 
some model data will be delivered to this uh, machine uh, from this uh, cloud, uh, use, and uh, all this interaction uh, will be controlled using AnyLogic Cloud API, uh, JavaScript API in this case. Uh, and uh, so to do this, uh, I need to connect AnyLogic and upload the model to this laptop. So that's... Yeah, uh, there's... Uh... Yeah, so just for demonstration purpose, on, on that laptop we have AnyLogic installed because we will need to uh, upload the, uh, the model. And then we have uh, the development environment, web development environment, which is IDEA IDE, uh, to show you the sources of the uh, web interface for the model. Okay? Okay, now, now I switch to yeah. Logic. And yeah, and you can, can probably show that there's no internet. We're, we're not online with this setup. So Wi-Fi is turned off here, uh, and this uh, is our local area network connection. Uh, we can try to open Google so it doesn't work. Um, so in AnyLogic, uh, under tools uh, preferences, we have a connection properties here, and uh, I've configured this AnyLogic to use uh, this uh, private cloud light installation instead of uh, standard public cloud AnyLogic.com, uh, and here is a local address of our uh, machine in this uh, local network, and. Uh, now I'm going to upload this uh, model to AnyLogic private cloud. We have this run configuration element here which describes uh, the model in terms of black box, so which are which parameters are the inputs, so which uh, uh, charts, data sets are outputs of our, of our model. Uh, and uh, so we are already logged in by uh, with Andre Yor's account, and uh, if I click here to export model, mm -hmm. so we create new model here. Uh, this will be icon. We may choose to upload uh, model source files for other developers, maybe to collaborate in this model development. Uh, I can check this one. It's like public access inside our private cloud. These are source files. So I press finish now. The model is being compiled and transferred to this laptop. And uh, this is our Chrome browser. You can see this address uh, here is well, our local network address of this laptop. And uh, all the interface is this uh, looks the same. It's almost the same like in our, our public cloud. Uh, and uh, we can perform the same actions like running the model animation. So now the model logic is uh, executed on this machine on, uh, and uh, the model animation is delivered and uh, uh, displayed on this uh, laptop connected to the projector. So the model is uh, the same like in any logic. Uh, we can uh, interact with the model, observe different uh, data, change parameters, we can, for instance, we can uh, turn on density map for these free space AGVs uh, to look that at the locations we are uh, in the, <coughs> where these AGVs spend more time. And uh, also this model has a no animation experiments which are operate on this data. Uh, in this model, we have a number of parameters, for example, number of uh, AGVs, their speed, some processing times, uh, etc. And uh, if we run this model, so now uh, the command is sent to this uh, uh, private cloud light, and it's uh, being executed, executing the model. And uh, now we are going to receive uh, our outputs uh, in uh, the form of standard uh, 
dashboard created for this model by Neologic Private Cloud. We can modify the view of uh, this dashboard. For example, we have a EGV utilization in form of like just number. We can change to some charts, etc. Uh, and uh, this is the standard user interface pro yeah. uh, which is provided yeah. by Neologic <laughs> Cloud. And now, okay. Yeah. So what we just did uh, only partially solves my problem because okay, what, what we did uh, we now have and put the model into the execution environment, uh, which is behind our f uh, firewall, right? So it's in a safe place. Uh, the model is uh, upgradable, because well, this is version one. I can upload more versions, so it's, uh, it's, it's pretty easy. I can manage users for the model, because if I go here, we have like sharing, I can invite people, invite users, colleagues, etc. So that is all in place. The only thing that I don't like at all is the uh, uh, user interface for experimenting with the model. Okay, I have this, I don't know, like 40 parameters, I have these charts, but I want, uh, I don't want my user to, uh, to use that. I want to actually um, group those parameters differently. Uh, I, I want to have a completely different user scenarios. And also, I don't want this uh, any logic logotype to appear here. I want my logotype to appear, right? So I want a completely customized and branded user interface for uh, this particular model. So, uh, okay, the model is sitting here uh, in the private cloud and um, I asked my web designer to put together a uh, web interface. This is IDEA IDE, just one of the, uh, the environments that you could use for, um, for web development. And uh, uh, yeah, Nikolai, maybe you will uh, give a, uh, yeah, just give, give a quick, quick tour about uh, this. It's a pretty standard web project. Yes, this, uh, it has uh, some the main HTML page are with uh, several sections here, like uh, there will be like steps uh, which we will see, uh, uh, and also it has some images. For example, this is, these are model images so which will be shown on this web page, and uh, some script files, and uh, we are currently interested to show. Um, this one, uh, uh, this script, JavaScript, uh, creates with uh, Analogic uh, Cloud API. So it creates some cloud client and uh, then calls some uh, you know, functions like start animation, uh, create parameter variation. Uh, so it sets inputs there, runs, uh, observes execution progress. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the address. Uh, of our private cloud, and this one is uh, an identifier of our user in this cloud, so for the ac access to be granted. This is an API key. Uh, it can be received here in the user profile menu. This one. So this uh, user, this is API key, we can copy it, uh, change, uh, for example, if Leaks. And uh, uh, this gear was inserted into this JavaScript, and uh, now we can. Uh, uh, what can we do? We can uh, run this. We can test this. Uh, yes. We can test uh, this from uh, uh, directly idea. from the IDE environment. So we can. Yeah, you can go to switch to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is how it looks like. It has a. So it's fully custom built for our demo project, and uh, it has design, and uh, it's like there are some menus here. So we can move, move later, but we... Uh, so so, uh, so we, we kind of tested well, that the user yeah. interface works, uh, but uh, we don't want to have it on, on this machine, right? We want to have it uh, in the cloud available for everybody, right? Yeah, we need some place to upload this uh, web interface and give a link to our user to run it. Uh, so we, uh, I'll go back to 
idea. Uh, and uh, I'm going to zip this uh, folder and upload it to any logical sorry, this was like form. So this is our project, web project, and uh, I choose here to create a zip archive, this one, and uh, if I go to the properties of our model, this one, uh, there is a <coughs> section custom UI. Uh, this is the place where we can upload our zip file with uh, this user interface. So I simply drag and drop our archive here. So now it's being unpacked. And uh, here is a link. So we can send this link to our user or to run this model. And uh, if we open this link here, this is a user interface. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically what we did, we asked somebody to develop it, a, a great user interface, very customized and branded for the model. And now we uh, uploaded the uh, HTML script files, etc., to the Analogy Cloud, which will serve as a web server, but exposing not the default interface, but the customized interface, uh, accessing, uh, accessing the same model. So uh, we could uh, probably switch to full screen. Yeah, uh, let's do. Yeah, so uh, let's go to a kind of uh, one of the possible scenarios of the, the model setup. So we uh, click start, and we have an, uh, a nice picture here which uh, shows the manufacturing floor, and we have all these uh, tool tips and explaining where it, uh, <coughs> where is what. And we have, we can uh, like uh, customize the uh, some parameters, let's say the uh, uh, capacity of the workstation or a conveyor speed, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, we have, uh, yeah, just to, just to remind you, we have two AGV fleets. One is moving items between these three um, uh, conveyors. And a different type of AGV, which is based here, delivers those little parts to the third uh, conveyor. So they are used for the final processing of the items. Just some uh, completely made up, of course, manu manufacturing process, right? So uh, in the next phase, and we have like breadcrumbs here, we can go back and you <coughs> forward. We choose the AGV type, and uh, let's say for the uh, uh, first. Hmm? Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay, we, we have a, a different AGV types here. If we change them, you can see this turn radius changes, and uh, uh, these uh, labels of the speed slider also change, and uh, we can uh, set different speed here, set different number of units. Uh, okay. mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, once I, uh, I'm finished with the AGV type setup, I proceed to the next page of my uh, user interface, and here I can choose which uh, experiment I want to run. So I have, well, in this particular uh, case, uh, I have uh, two options. This animation, just to, to see, um, uh, see simulation, or to try out the parameters I've chosen uh, and parameter variation to obtain the final results. So uh, let's start with animation. So what we have here, uh, we have a placeholder for any logic animation. So what you uh, basically have developed in any logic um, uh, with any logic uh, model development tool will be shown here, right? Uh, and uh, the important point is that uh, we want you to treat any logic animation as just uh, something that shows you the, uh, the dynamics of things, right? 
We don't want you to use any logic animation for to create wizards, to create like pages with parameters set up. No. Uh, because for that, like normal plain HTML uh, is much, much better. Uh, so uh, the, the, the animation, the, the picture will be shown here, and here I will have some chart. Let's, uh, let's start the model. You can see here uh, the speed parameter was taken from the previous page, and uh, what are these, these sliders uh, for in this model? So they are actually live uh, input controls for our animation. So we can change uh, these input parameters while the model runs. So this is our model animation. Uh, it's uh, uh, delivered using the same technology like on the standard any logic cloud pages so it's like on the uh, the place folder where we have uh, this animation and we have the same statistics uh, page logic page we can change uh, these parameters while the model runs and uh, so now it uh, waits for new data uh, and uh, we run mm, continue running this model yeah. Uh, you can much. still go full screen with this, right? So actually, the model execution currently is faster than uh, it was uh, run in any logic because the model logic is uh, being run on this machine, and this uh, one is only occupied this model animation. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we uh, have a, so I've changed this input uh, and uh, we have some time to wait for the data to be collected and this is a like a yeah this yeah. this is uh, what's called a violin plot I think and uh, we obviously we chose that plot because it's 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 not it's missing in any logic you don't have like all the variety of, of charts and plots that you have in other uh, BI tools in this case, for this chart, we use Plotly, which is a uh, open source free library for um, kind of BBI library, but you can use whatever you want. If you want to use Tableau, use Tableau. Uh, it's, uh, you have the free choice because it's not within uh, the animation window, it's within your window, which is under your full control, right? And, um, all other things are controlled from outside of, of this window, right? So uh, we also plan to uh, uh, to give you the option of completely removing this uh, this bar, right? Because you still have an analogic in here, so uh, <laughs> you might not want it. So it will be possible to even uh, not uh, to have animation without this uh, this toolbar. But by the way, and the, the these all these buttons are disabled uh, because we don't want them to be um, to be active right now. So, okay. So we, so we can switch between uh, different view areas using these buttons, and uh, we can uh, pause. Uh, the Always model like change speed, etc. etc. Et and stop this model. And, and so we, yeah. Uh, like uh, so it. all all this interaction between these buttons uh, and this chart and the model is done through the uh, JavaScript and then uh, through HTTP between these two machines, of course. Okay. So let's stop the model. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Then the mm -hmm. okay. Let's finish and then let's go to parameter variation. So uh, this is my parameter variation screen. I have uh, for two AGV uh, fleets, I have the fleet size, the number of vehicles, and I have the, the speed, which is also an adjustable parameters uh, in, in a certain range for each AGV type. Uh, and what I will vary, I will, for, the, for the one of the fleets, which is assembly line AGVs, um, I will vary uh, the fleet size from 2 to 5 and the speed, let's say, from 0.5 to 2 with the step uh, 0.5, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And uh, uh, let's run it. Now, the stop time of the simulation is pretty, uh, <clears throat> uh, pretty big, so it'll take a while. 
and as you can uh, easily calculate, there will be how many? Mm, 12? 16. 16. 16 simulation runs. Uh, uh, so while it's running, we can uh, show that this, is, uh, this user interface uh, can be made adaptive. Yes, we can, uh, mm -hmm. for example, on a mobile phone, uh, when, where the browser has a small this, uh, we can see that. And the layout is changed automatically, so uh, these are our menus. Mm -hmm. So actually, uh, if you um, upload this model to your private cloud and it has some uh, URL, some link, uh, not like uh, this one mm, uh, for our t testing, uh, you can give it to your colleagues and they will run from mobile phone, tablet, uh, laptop. Uh, yeah, so. and uh, you obviously see that the progress is uh, uh, going slowly, uh, but this is only because uh, I was trying to save some money. I only bought Analogic Private Cloud Lite, which installs in one server, and in this case, this is uh, Nikolai's machine. Yes. Right, so uh, if uh, I was uh, not so greedy, and if I bought the, the Analogic Private Cloud full, uh, the, this experiment obviously would be would have finished already. But uh, for now, uh, we have to wait a little bit. Yeah, this CPU is 100% busy now. All the cores are occupied. And this uh, output chart is uh, also fully customizable. You can use uh, any yeah, libraries. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, in this case, this yeah, is another is. plotly chart that will as a surface chart. So. Here you go. So, uh, Nikolai, would you like to comment on the on the chart what we see here? So we uh, here we see a uh, three-dimensional surface plot, uh, which is uh, which shows us uh, utilization of our HVs uh, against uh, two parameters, uh, which we uh, vary here, which are fleet size and uh, speed, and uh, it's. Uh, uh, <laughs> Pretty, uh, um, it's pretty, like it's pretty uh, uh, in, intuitive, right? Intuitive, what understandable. We see here, yeah. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Uh, if you have uh, more HVs, uh, their utilization will uh, fall down, and uh, so you can <coughs> color your surface, uh, change uh, the appearance. Uh, it's fully yours. Uh, Implementation is mm -hmm. the only uh, thing uh, which comes to from our uh, analogic private cloud is the data for this chart. So uh, if we press next here, we can see uh, one more page developed uh, for this custom user interface. Uh, it's like a summary of our run, and uh, here we have added this button to download file. So this is a CSV file downloaded from our Neologic Private Cloud with all the data behind that surface plot. So it uh, opens in Excel. You can uh, use this data in any way you want to. Uh, and uh, alternatively, you could use a cloud API to pass this data to your uh, processing pipeline, etc. Yeah. So no, now I think that's it with the example. Yeah. Yes, and we are going to uh, plug off the cable. Uh, uh, yes, but before we be, before we do that, just just to um, just to summarize this, so what what actually Analogic Cloud does? It uh, packages the model and uh, provides a standard interface to the model, which is completely agnostic of of how the model was implemented. In our case, it's of course Java, but it could be anything. So uh, on uh, the interface of the AnyLogic 
cloud, private or, uh, or full <coughs> private or public cloud, is obviously uh, uh, HTTP, right? And on top of HTTP, we have various options. We have JavaScript that we used in this case. We have Java for backend development because you can still uh, include um, cloud-based models in your Java uh, uh, workflows. And uh, there's Python. Uh, of course, uh, Python is, uh, we will talk more about Python this afternoon, but uh, of course now these days people just need Python API to do, uh, for example, AI and simulation integration, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, in this case, okay, we don't care what was the implementation language of the model. We only use uh, one of the languages supported by the, the AnyLogic Cloud. Okay, and now Nikolai. Uh, so if I, uh, for example, I could uh, run the model. Ah, uh, here are the, uh, there are several examples uh, already uploaded to all private clouds uh, by Andre. If, uh, and uh, I'm going to entertain you. I will switch off this cable while the model animation is running. Like, so it's currently moving. If I switch off the cable, you see they are stopped. So connection lost. So that's it. If we turn on Wi-Fi now, so now and I'm going to switch to slides. Uh -huh. Yes, so uh, what we also did uh, for this demo, we uploaded the same um, customized interface to our public cloud. So uh, if you have time, just you know, um, in, your, in your phone web browser, uh, type in this uh, clouds.anylogic.com slash custom UI demo, and uh, you will be able to run the same thing. Uh, but it'll be obviously running in, in our pu public cloud. So um, I think we're basically done with the, with the demo, right? All right? Yeah. So I'll leave that, that address uh, on the screen. And uh, we would like to uh, take your questions. Thanks. So my question is just our requirement with a lot of clients is that you should be able to upload Excel files and huge data files in order to dynamically populate your model. And I would have liked to see a demo of that if you can just right. elaborate on that right. functionality. Right. One of the new features of the recent release is we have now uh, files as standard inputs of AnyLogic Cloud. So you, uh, and therefore, uh, that was the only way to feature because uh, otherwise if you cannot upload file uh, to the cloud, you cannot really parameterize uh, complicated models. So that is uh, already done. It's, it's already in there. So a par, uh, in addition to kind of uh, simple like uh, per, uh, scalar parameters like integers, booleans, etc., we now have file as uh, analogic cloud uh, inputs and the model can be parameterized with uh, files. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I've got a microphone already. Uh -huh. Thanks. <laughs> uh, really, really cool to see. Just a quick one. So this custom UI demo is now on the public cloud, right? But generally, on the public cloud, you can't have custom UI. Do I understand that correct? Or uh, no. It's, uh, it's only we did for the purpose of this particular demo. But the custom UI, um, uh, where is it? Oh, you, I, I cannot see it from here, right? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, we have Wi-Fi connection currently. We, we yeah, can, okay, uh, okay. Let's uh, let's go to the uh, to the n uh, normal cloud. So if um, custom UI is available in a private cloud only, yes. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hey. Um, do you guys have uh, plans on uh, integrating um, uh, 
Tableau with uh, any logic uh, or, or uh, optimization like softwares like Cplex or anything integrated? In uh, Tableau integration, you mean? Yeah. Uh, we don't plan because uh, we uh, uh, plan to give you the, uh, uh, the ability to uh, integrate with your favorite BI uh, tools, be it Tableau or, some, or something else. And this is exactly what we're kind of trying to demonstrate here, because uh, we, we, we keep, um, what, what we plan to do, we plan to further extend the API of cloud-based models. We, we will extend the number of languages that, that, that are supported at, at this, with this API, but with, with regards to kind of final uh, BI development or user interface development, uh, we want to leave it to the user, right? Because we kind of do everything, right? Uh, and uh, our, our <clears throat> because we, we will do what, what we're best at, right? It's uh, a simulation, uh, simulation modeling tool, and the cloud as a hosting or um, execution environment for simulation models with a very rich API. This, uh, this, is, this is our direction. And uh, uh, how about... Uh, I would like to add something to say tomorrow, we will demo integration with Stubble during Benelog. Oh yeah, it's in the morning, right? Yeah, morning. yeah, yeah. So yeah, so we, you will see that. You will see Tableau uh, working with the uh, with the Analogy Cloud, but again, this is not something that you know comes you know out of the box, right? This is something that you can do. Mm -hmm. How about uh, um, optimization softwares like Cplex or uh, FICO Express integrated? So the background, instead of developing a heuristic algorithm, it calls the Cplex to solve a problem and then gets the results. Uh huh. Right. Uh, Cplex is not a part of, of, uh, of AnyLogic. Um, in AnyLogic, by the way, there is a simpler version of LP Solver, which is Apache Solver. And if you want LP problems to be solved as the model running, you can interface that if you want. Now, uh, there is a optimizer um, called OptQuest, integrated with the desktop development tool. But the, and this, is, uh, this type of optimizer is called black box optimizer. It's specially tuned to work with simulation models where you uh, cannot make any assumptions on the shape of your, of your surface. That's kind of linear, nonlinear, uh, whatever. Uh, uh, Cplex is used in our other tool, which is AnyLogistics, and this is, again, uh, tomorrow morning's presentation. So this is a vertical tool for supply chains where you, uh, you have to have linear optimization to do network optimization. So there, Cplex is really integrated. But if you take the, the kind of the default AnyLogic, there's no, no Cplex in there. Mm -hmm. Hi, so with the... Uh, the demo that you have right there, um, you're hard coding the uh, API key into the, the JavaScript file, so it, it's always there. You know, I, can, I can grab it right now. Um, is, the, or is there support uh, for like an auth authentication API uh, so that I can dynamically load in that uh, API key for each user so that I'm using you know, an individual user that I've set up in the private clouds API key rather than kind of a global shared one? Uh, so uh, uh, it's co a common practice to have a API key way for all the APIs uh, in uh, different uh, services. So we follow the same way. Uh, if you, uh, so authentication to the uh, analogy cloud is uh, done by this API key. If you want uh, some user management, uh, uh, your own user management, uh, you may implement it in your system, in your server, your interface, uh, and uh, you can store uh, the mapping between users and their API keys and substitute them dynamically to this uh, like uh, code in this script. So you expose the API key that's, you know, like when you went to your profile and saw the API key, you expose that via an API as well? Oh, correct. So, uh, yeah, good question. Uh, so, uh, in this user interface, once this web page with all the scripts is 
download, it comes to the client machine and browser, and the API key is exposed to this user. Uh, and the solution for this case is treat this situation like one user, one cloud user, one API key is uh, per uh, exact uh, target user. So if you, like a, a consultant company maybe, um, is a, you are developing uh, several projects for some several customers, uh, you need to create uh, um, separate users in Analogic private cloud for these companies, and uh, they will have different API keys, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, these API keys will grant access to the models uploaded for those particular users. So you share, you create your model, and you share the, the model with exact users. So they will not have access to the models uploaded for different clients. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks. Right. We have more questions. Uh, hey, do you have any, any models that are reading time series data through REST APIs? Uh, uh, time series data through REST APIs, seamless data. I mean, it is con coming time series data continuously through over the REST APIs. Uh, I'm not sure I, I, I got it. So uh, uh, We are reading the data, loading the data through using some of the REST APIs. Yeah, Can we read the data directly from REST APIs? Uh, if, if I understood correctly, I was uh, asking about whether we have a REST API documentation there. Yeah, the output that are we are trying to load to the model through REST APIs. Would it be possible? Uh, Do you have any, any demo that uh, you can run through that? Uh, so uh, we have a uh, REST API for uh, this connection. Uh, we have different endpoints. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a documentation where the list of endpoints is uh, uh, presented addresses, uh, arguments, parameters, re return types, uh, uh, data is uh, passed in a JSON format, uh, and uh, so you could probably operate this, uh, this REST API directly, but for simplicity we provide several libraries in uh, different languages. Uh, for, for JavaScript, there are some script files to simplify the connection like this. Uh, uh, in this example, we had a code uh, we called cloud client dot uh, create for the API key. So, and for Java, we have also some classes. Uh, so it's like a jar file you connect to your application and simply create classes, uh, objects, and call methods there. Yeah, so, so what, what communicates with a cloud-based model uh, uh, does not necessarily have to be uh, the, uh, the UI, right? It can be some back-end workflow that you have on your, uh, your you know, analytical uh, server cloud, right, that will uh, call the cloud-based model. And in that case, you would use either uh, Java or Python. But, yeah. Is it the answer? Yeah, do you have any sample model where we can refer, if you have those? Yeah, we, we, have, we have examples and, yes, uh, have. yeah, of course, yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So, is that it? All right, so uh, thanks very much, guys, for uh, coming so early to this workshop. And we're really looking forward to the Anyology Conference. And uh, thank you. Thank you.